Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Between Two Keep Stars. I'm your host, Karma X, and today with me we have the beautiful Ish Sindopolis. I can't, I'll pronounce it later. L- let's do um, Sindopolis. Sindopolis? I like that better than the actual pronunciation. Sindopolis? You know, I'm, I'm never going to tell you how to pronounce it because I just want to hear all your creative pronunciations. Uh, Anyway, welcome to the number one show to air every Sunday at 21, well, approximately 2100 Eve, uh, by elimination. And uh, yeah, it's time for Between Two Keep Stars. Um, today, we were a little short on guests, so uh, we had something planned that was well, going to be kind of a cool, a pretty cool topic, but uh, we found some other stuff. So y'all are going to have to suffer for at least an hour of me and, uh, me and Isha's voice is yeah that's that's what you get for not coming on the show yourself oh god it's 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 a punishment it's a punishment everyone deserves we're just threatening people now it's like come on our show make our lives easy yeah it's now extortion it's let's just step right up to it It's, it's it's straight up extortion you have to listen to us if you don't if you don't wanna if you don't wanna be on the show so, if you do want to be on the show, by the way, make sure you're in the New Eden Post Discord. If you don't want to be on the show, make sure you're in the New Eden Post Discord so you can make fun of the people who do want to be in the show. But if you do want to be on the show, uh, join the Drag Me channel. We'll eventually notice you, and uh, we'll do something about that. And we can talk about pretty much whatever. We're, pre- we're pretty open today. I'm, I'm feeling open. I'm feeling honest and open and refreshed. Oh, oh each, don't forget about the, uh, the pissed off uh, bitter vets. Yeah. We definitely, yeah. we definitely like those people too. Yeah, absolutely. the The, the more pissed off and dramatic you want to be, the more welcome you are today. We, we we don't we don't hide from the from the dramatic flare ups and and the princess moments. Uh, you're absolutely welcome to uh, espouse those here, uh, or not. <sighs> so, I, speaking I of, I, speaking I, of. I was about to say, speaking of pissed off vets, um, or bitter vets, we have a, a very special surprise for y'all. Um, but uh, it's not today, and it might not be next week, but it is coming. And uh, it's it's going to each help me out here, because I don't know how to finish this without it sounding really dirty. Uh, you'll see. I I, th- I think the less it's said, the better. I think I think we'll build it up and then just surprise the hell out of people. We have a we have we have some cool things. We we, we have something cool coming. So, I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't know why, but someone just pinged me heads up, and I'm I put my head above the monitor. And I'm just like, oh wait, heads. Oh wait, no, oh, never. Well, mind. I'm I'm too quiet. Am I still too quiet? How about now? Am I am I quiet now? Is this insufferably loud, or is this about right? How's this, Dr. Spod? Oh, that was... No, I can't handle oh, that. Oh, God, all right. We're going to need to we're gonna need to up the rating of this show a little bit. Yeah, where, where, where's, where's that mature filter? Uh, all right, let's, um, let's get the changes out of the way, because I'm so tired of talking about Eve patches and changes. I'm, let's uh, talk about more! Let's talk about it some more. So let's get this out of the way. Let's get all our complaints about what actually happened and what didn't happen out of the way. So I'm going to be real. Um, I I didn't actually read the patches myself. I just watched the TLDR that they did on the meta show. And uh, the TLDR I got is that uh, people still don't like the changes. Um, I, (laughs) I haven't engaged with them because like, I don't know, null sec kind of sucks just in general right now and uh i'm not gonna do anything until i uh hear something on a leaked matani fireside because they seem to be the only ones telling their people what to do Mm. is that is is that a good thing you know i i have no idea i mean i it's something uh i'll be honest there's not a lot in this patch to tell people to do uh, what I mean is, uh, and this doesn't mean it was a good patch, it doesn't mean it was even uh, the worst patch or the best patch or whatever. I just mean that in the end, this patch is pretty insignificant all around. In other words, if you actually liked the direction that 
CCP appeared to be headed to utterly quash Rourke Wilson and make mining barges the king of the world. I, I guess you're a little closer it. to your goal, but yeah. not in any meaningful way. And so, if you didn't like the change and you thought it was really stupid that uh, mining income would be totally destroyed for uh, small time players and new players, well, good news, it's not. Yeah, I was about to say, if you think that that's true, then you're kind of an idiot. Um. Well, there's a, there's so, a lot of uh, there's a lot of the sky is falling moments with freaking out about mining waste and everything, and uh, I've already seen it. More than one person on Reddit say, "Oh, I went out mining and it was fine," and that's true. If you're in an exhumer, if you're in a venture, if you're in a whatever, it's it's gonna be fine. You're you're probably actually gonna come out a little bit ahead, depending on where you're mining, how long you're mining, wh how much you care, etc. Uh, and, and good for you. Uh, at the end, though, I'm not sure that this is the kickoff to the Prosperity Quadrant, because I don't know whose Prosperity this is actually for, because the I don't think miners. anyone actually gets a net ahead. I don't think the miners get a net ahead. I, I, I yeah, think... I, uh, I, I was go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. I'm an idiot. I interrupted you. Uh, I, I was just going to say that, like, the small miners are going to get a minor buff in income uh, that's going to be massively offset by a market upheaval that's going to last a few months here. And I don't see anything in this patch that's going to help that because that market upheaval is shifted by forces a lot larger and a lot more significant than the guy pulling out, you know, 500 spot. So what happens is, all the things he is likely to then go spend his isk on are still in a high state of flux or just a high state of overprice overpricedness. Is that a word? It is now. Um, but yeah, the, the one thing that I got, and this is the thing that I didn't know what to think about, but uh, so this was a, uh, a thick, and that's with six C's on the end of it. This was a thick patch. Um, there are apparently lots of bugs as well as th there are lots of features that are actually, how do I say this? There are a lot of bugs in it and there's a lot of features. Some of the features are so bad that people think they're bugs and some of the bugs are like, is this a feature? And again, that's all hearsay. Like I have no idea if that's true or not. I, again, I pretty much at the beginning of, Vietnam, I pretty much just said, fuck mining. Uh, I'm going to go, I guess, live off of Plex. Um, <laughs> and you know what? It worked out pretty well for the duration of the war. I didn't need to replace caps. So, yeah, I was fine. Uh, the the ever-reliable source of income, Plex. Uh, which, you know, the, the more conspiratorially minded may be saying that's exactly what CCP slash PA wants everyone to do is to uh, is to live off that rather than, than build an in-game reliable stream. I, I'm not as conspiratorially minded. I, I, I think, you know, I, I'm a big believer in the, the old adage, never attribute to malice what can be reasonably attributed to stupidity. So I, I think this is some mi mis- misguided steps here by CCP because I can see, I mentioned this when the patch was very first announced and got some people very riled up and red-faced about it, but I actually said the uh, the direction was correct, the vector was wrong, and I still hold to that, by the way. The direction is actually the correct direction. It's, it's fine if people don't want to agree. It's fine if people are mad about that. Uh, it is the right direction. You do need to do something about the absolutely ridiculous state of economy that we lived through with uh, about five years in EVE. And, and the way to uh, change that direction is to uh, change the rules of the game beyond what player forces are going to be able to do to influence markets and to hamper certain player forces from uh, gaining an undue influence in markets, which is, which is what's been happening. So to do all that, you do need to change some things in the game. I'm I'm just not really impressed with this as a kickoff to it because I, I don't think we achieve a lot. We get a little bit more depth out of mining, I guess. I guess there's a little bit more depth in the mechanics of mining. Some extremely minor tier aside in the sense that 
Now you've got more ships that can hold, more industrial ships that can hold more useful cargo. Uh, and you've got mining crystals. In the end, when it finally settled out, to, to, to be actually a little bit more simple than they were, if anyone is much more into mining and disagrees with that, uh, do disagree with that. Don't just come and chat. Just come on the show. Just yell at us. Yell at us about mining. Uh, we're mining idiots, so we're just going to say mining things until someone gets mad enough to join the show. That's another form of extortion. Um, yeah, and, and I actually agree with Dr. Spotamain, um, who, who I, I've decided has a PhD in mining based on his name. So Dr. Spotamain, PhD in mining, has pointed out that high sec is going to be notably different in that you're not like the skiff and procurer. And that's true. You've got more mining barge choices. There's a lot more uh, diversity among the mining barges, I guess, in terms of certain fitting. And yeah, the Procurer can fit a gecko, which is interesting, uh, as someone else pointed out in chat. But it losing one mid slot, two mid slots, it lost two mid slots, right? Uh, it absolutely kind of kills some PvP opportunity for it. And that's the thing, I, I, I've mentioned this before, that's the thing I was actually disappointed by. If you're going to go and you're going to touch mining barges, make them more PvP capable. Because I always thought it was fun to do, like, uh, I, I thought bait industrial ship stuff was fun. You know, so you he, know. here's the thing that I think about mining barges, right? And again, high set gankers will disagree with me, but like, he, here's the thing. And that's actually something that was noted, was noticed is that a lot of suicide gankers did not like the, the buff to, uh, to Hulk's um, Princess Akiko, who was the, the person in charge of uh, safety, the basically the code offshoot um, does not like it because, you know, her thing is that, oh, well, it's going to allow bots to, you know, mine safely in, what was it, in hulks, which, I mean, botting is a totally different problem. Like, I'm sorry, but if, if you're angry and your justification is, well, you know, bots are going to be easier to, it's going to be easier to bot in high sec. Well, it was always really fucking easy to bot in high sec. Yep. Like, uh, I, I'm, bots, I'm sorry. Bots, now, now the bots are just going to make up. a little bit more. But, like, if someone's botting, that's a totally different problem. The problem is they're, is that they're botting. Um, we've seen CCP make changes before to try and, like, uh, to try and combat botting, and it, it didn't work. Like, it actually just pissed off the player base. Yeah, like yeah. a lot. So uh, them saying, "Yeah, we're not going to worry about you know botting in high sec because oh no, you know, hulks are more tanky." Like, no, we need them to be more tanky so that we can use them in null sec so that we can mine our moons so that we don't have to rely on rorks. Like, yeah, it's just I, I lean more towards that line of thinking instead of the oh, but high sec mining bots. Also, we'd like to to welcome. Uh, I don't have your name. Uh, Namex from uh, Brotherhood of Spacers Alliance. Yes. And special thanks to uh, Dex, who uh, might not be part of the show anymore, but uh, he still helps out. So shout out to him. Why the fuck is my cat meowing? Anyway, because it's a cat. Yeah. Welcome, Namex. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Dex said you ugly. I'm going to assume that was directed at Karama. Wow. Because I'm beautiful. So. I mean, I can come on camera if you really want to see. Listen, based off my name, I, I can 100% tell you that I'm at, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not, not going to go there. <laughs> you dropped that super fast. You know, because I realized that I was probably going to say something. Nope, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not bringing foxes into the stream. This is not a fox stream. This well, is, that this, comes this, later. Does does it though? Does it? Does See, it what really, you don't really... realize is that the fox stream is we're just going to have a bunch of fox holders people on, and then just like have a slideshow of just different types of foxes running in the background while we're talking about random fox facts. <sighs> How does it relate to Eve? We have an Eve Corp named Foxholders. But ow. Anyway. I'm dying here. I'm dying. Rescue me, Nemex. What's up? Where are we? What are we doing? I ask that question every day and I never get a single answer that matters. 
Uh, we were just we were just talking about some of these these changes and talking about the the mining changes and how it's basically a net uh, a net very little shift in momentum, and how the mining barges there was an opportunity to give them an interesting PvP buff and instead they got mostly a boring PvP buff, and that's the wow. only thing I care about when touching the mining barges. However, uh, Karama did point out that the the changes and I mostly agree with this the the changes in in Exumer uh, survivability. Uh, are a good thing. I actually do agree with that. I do think they were actually way too easy to suicide gank or gank in general. I just wish that the changes had come more and had come less with just uh, straight up EHP or tank fitting capability, and more with some interesting like counter PVP type stuff. Give them a few more high slots. Like, you know, wouldn't it be funny if a procurer could say shoot some missiles at you reliably while mining? I'm not saying, you know, make them a Titan. I'm just saying make them on par with the kind of cruiser they cost. Well, Fraternity destroyed all of our Athenors, so we don't we don't mine anymore. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good <laughs> It's it's a silly thing. It, it's it's one of those things that happened. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that cuz actually that's much more interesting to me. I mean, I don't think anyone wants to talk about the patch anymore. Let's hope not. If you do keep talking about it and we'll eventually circle back to it. Let's let's talk about Fraternity uh, ab absolutely uh, pushing you guys around and like uh, so. So that was what, what the hell is going on up there? Well, I mean, I guess some backstory is Boss Alliance. We had Sav a few years ago. Lived in Tinal Drone Lands. Um, then we disbanded, rejoined Test for a year, year and a half. Um, but Blue Donut, too many. Too many blues, not enough hostiles to shoot. We always like to kind of do our own thing as a, a corporation. So we reformed Boss Alliance and moved to the place where we think there would be the most content. So NPC Venal. Um, and it hasn't really disappointed. Um, in terms of like the Athenors and stuff, like, I mean, it was mo mostly free real estate. Um, There's a couple like Horde groups and other Pan Pan groups that had some moons, but. Um, we just took like all the moons possible. So our four or five, um, miners would mine them. And at one point, I guess Norris and fraternity decided that they wanted to destroy our ISK income. Um, I guess we were like bossing them too much. Yeah. Um, so for about a month, they were forming, you know, hundred, even 200 man fleets to come and structure bash, um, our Athenors. Mm. So we we lost most of them. Um, the funny thing is, like, we're probably gonna take down half of them, but we're just too lazy. Um, got I'm saying now you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got a couple good fights. I mean, we always kill a lot of stragglers. Um, no, no loss to us really, other than some structures. Um, most of them being like structures that we find in space that people don't an anchor or we made a lot of isk off of the abandoned structure change that was really really good for us right but right living that uh nomadic lifestyle out of uh, npc space surrounded by regions full of content it's a uh, it's a pretty good place to to be a pvp -er in most people call that being homeless i mean we always have stations man where there's always a home i, I know i'm just i'm just giving <laughs> shit I mean, it it is being homeless, but it's 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 sometimes the best kind of Eve homeless. I, I I've said many times if I if I leave, if I leave the null block life, it's gonna be to go back to living in NPC space and stations, and uh, I would probably do something like uh, yeah, NPC Venal is pretty good. There's a few NPC regions that are, that are pretty nice and uh, have that content around. So yeah, more power to you guys for uh, doing some work out of there, and I, I hope you keep giving them hell, not just because it's frat, but just because it's uh. Because it's just a good idea, you know? G g give yeah, give mean, anybody it's... help. People I like, people I don't like, because that, there needs to be more of that. Like, I I feel like hazing is at an all-time low. Am I am I wrong there? Are, are we are we lower than we've been in a long time on hazing? Uh, I feel like we are. Each, the reason why you say that is because you're in Horde. And according to all the propaganda, Horde is the center of the blue donut. Yes, of course. Our, our, our billions of allies, just absolutely billions of allies, and 
and and how the, there's never any drops or any content, and it's and it's all Horde's fault, and Horde is ruining the game because it's Horde's week to ruin the game. Next week is Gons again. Gon, <laughs> wait. You know, Gur Gons. I, People sometimes I, mispronounce them goons. I, I know. I'm just. I'm trying to. You I don't know what I was trying to do. Catching up. Catching up. Listen, I, I might have a 300 IQ, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> it's a lot of zeros. It's Horde exactly did eat your dog. That's that's how we. That's actually how we afforded to core all our Fortisars Finally, is we ate enough dogs. Okay. Um, I, I there is one fort. That is not cord, and it's because it's in the exact same system with a Sotio. And I know it's not cord because I tried to move a cap to there, and my cap didn't tell her. I was like, "Oh, this is unfortunate." Oh, that's congratulations on finding the one uncord one, or at least the one uncord one I've seen. I don't know. I don't spend enough time in horde space these days. I'm out, I'm out doing doing other things. Uh, but all the same. So, Brother of Space is, you're, you're living out of NPC space. Uh, Frat is going around trying to pop your Athenors. Um, what, what, what is it like dropping on Frat right now? What's, how, how's the response feeling? How swift are they? So, a, a lot of our, our dropping happens, you know, in, in areas where we kind of know what's happening. A, a good example was um, Lord of Worlds, um, and I guess some Frat main... Um, we're moving a Blops, like one of their Blops battleship fleets, from um, their Sov and Tribute into Venal. You have to take a regional gate. Mm -hmm. um, I saw them gate some Blops, three Supers, and two Carriers. I, I think they were trying to take a shortcut um, th um, through Venal to get into to Declan to try to do some drops on Volta Renters. Mm -hmm. um, but like... We knew where they were going to have to mid, um, so we set up some cloaky sabers, um, started forming up to, to counter drop them, and they jumped right into a system in Venal where we had our sabers. Um, we warped right to the Sino, bubbled all their whole fleet, um, all three supers, um, everything. We were still forming at this point. Um, one of the supers got out, um, but we did end up killing um, their Nyx. Which was which was nice. Um, so it's just kind of seizing moments of opportunity. Um, same thing like on Friday night. Um, I think it was a, a PL jump freighter and a PL Oracle. I just saw. I knew they were going to take the regional gate back into drone lands because you have to take the regional gate back into drone lands from Venal, and we were able to kill the Ark that dropped two Fortizars that we scooped. So that was that was kind of nice. I think that kill is uh, top of Z kill right now. Mm -hmm. so, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Just just you know, we we have a core group of dudes, dudes with with alts, dudes with hunters, dudes with spies. Um, so we kind of just use that to our advantage, and we're always we're always watching on things, um, and yeah, kind of just seize on moments of opportunity. Um, marauders are all around pretty fun targets to drop on or bait with with ess fleets so yeah just kind of knowing who our enemies are and, and how they fight and trying to plan accordingly okay okay yeah that's, that's, that's like it sounds like you had a pretty nice dunk there um I, I have this theory. I want you to confirm, deny, and I, I think this story actually goes in line with what you just told. This, this little fun fleet anecdote. Uh, so I, I think two things are happening. One, Frat is the new goons, and I'm going to expand on that in a minute. Okay. And then two, because Frat is the new goons, they're getting increasingly worse at PvP until they're just going to become complete paper tiger mode. Then get dunked on in a months long campaign that's going to end with them not getting evicted, just like Vietnam. So, the issue with that is two things. Um, I mean, Frat prides themselves as Veil the, the content, and I will give them credit. They, unlike certain groups that might be present here with us, 
Um, they will try to form a comp that will like give somewhat of a fair fight. If it's a Spectre fleet, they'll form Feroxes or Caracals or, or whatever. Like, yeah, they, they will blob you, but it's a little bit different than going into Goon Space, Test Space, Horde Space, where you're just going to, like, have a Nano Gang or a small fleet and they just drop a bunch of supers and shit on you. So I will give Frat some credit for that, and that is a good way for them to train up um, their, their, their dudes into PvP. So when it comes to important fights, they know what they're doing. Um, and the other thing that they, they are doing a good job at is, I mean... They're hard to evict because of their time zone. So unless there's another, you know, AUTZ, CNTZ, null block, which there really isn't, their their iHubs um, and structures are really hard to hit. I mean, yep. I had this issue when I was FCing for test and, you know, FCing fleets at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time because that's when timers were. And at the time, Frat, you know was generally able to to outform us. Um, but, I mean, that's the one thing they have going for their advantage just based off of the majority of their, their group. You're not wrong there. At the same time, I wish I had the uh, the queued up recording of Sword Dragon saying that he will time zone tank all of EVE and no one will beat him from his time zone tanking. And then, surprise, surprise, he lost that. I think if people care enough, TZ tank isn't as big of a deal. Um, it's certainly inconvenient. No, no getting around that, but I don't think it's as big of a deal. Uh, I, I will agree that Frat will put a little bit more effort out to give a, a somewhat decent fight to some fleets. It kind of depends on what you're hitting and what you're doing to them. If you're just roaming around, you're more likely to get a measured response. You hit certain things, you, uh, you poke certain, uh, branches of their income tree, and then, then all of a sudden, you know, it, it, that, that fair fight goes straight out the window, but I, I don't necessarily disagree. And I want to say on the record, uh, I don't care if it's Horde or whoever, um, if someone is dropping caps or, like, whatever on uh, nano gangs roaming through, uh, you're part of the problem. And you <laughs> suck. And you're bad at EVE and you should feel bad. Just straight up. Like, now, it's different. If you want to drop a Holodread and go, like, uh, try to take on by yourself, like, uh, an 18-man nano gang or something like that, you know, go all Lasker Emanuel style, more power to you. But the people dropping like six carriers, 16 carriers, you know, whatever, all that crap. You know, dread bombing uh, a 12-man nano gang from Brotherhood of Spacers, anyone else. You're bad and you should feel bad. So, I'll, I'll just say on the record. I do, I, do like a, I do like an even response. I think, you know... Uh, one of the worst parts about being in Horde is that you can't go fight Horde because most of the time, and I, I don't know, t tell me your experience in MX, you know, t t feel free to disagree vehemently. Most of my previous time outside of Horde, when I went to Horde space, you usually got a, a somewhat reasonable fight. I don't know if there is such a thing as a fair fight, Neve, but I, I, no. I only got <laughs> utterly, I only got utterly dunked on once. Like, where it was just an absolute, total unparalleled response. The other times, it's just maybe a, too many people, like Blobby. Like you said, frag no, will do. The thing but... about Horde is usually you can like frag a couple kills from their standing fleet before mm -hmm. someone yeah. organizes. Um, it, it depends. I mean, we roamed out there earlier today and in Talwars, and I think someone blopsed in like like Loki, like a Loki fleet to kill us too. So I don't know. I mean, I get it as well. Like if I was just sitting in a standing fleet board and there was kills to be had. I would do the same thing, and I mean, we take any opportunity we get to to assure as many kills as we can get, and and I understand that that's that's part of the game, and we kind of like the the uphill battle. I mean, there's never been a fight where we haven't fought outnumbered against them, and I mean, we have some some BRs where we've done done really well, and a lot of our doctrines that we we use are kind of built around um, knowing that we're we're going to be fighting um, outnumbered. So we we like that challenge. Sometimes it's it's frustrating, especially when you see fraternity bat phone like other groups to come fight us because our sixty dudes like they don't want to fight with their hundred. They'd rather have three hundred to fight our sixty. Yep. Um, that that is frustrating for sure. Um, but I mean, people want to win fights, and I I I do get that. Remember when I said Frat is becoming the new goons? I, I, I just I just want to be able to say I told you so later, so I'm going to bring this up a lot. <laughs> so, but I feel like I'm right. I just like to bring it up a lot. 
and that's why you're you're the co-host. <laughs> What's this? I have a question for you guys. Um, so we we get frat pings. What what is this um, between horde and frat like? You guys being able to use friendly structures to blops on each other? That seems that seems kind of interesting. Uh, okay. I, I, I have to preface this with... <clears throat> That's a bit official, fucky official, lucky. Official disclaimer. I do not speak for Horde. I do not speak for Horde leadership. I am not involved in any of these decisions. So I just want to be extra clear with that. But here's the deal as far as I understand it. There's two different things going on. One, if certain forces decide to amass an ally and go bang their way into Venal, it's not necessarily only bad for Frat. Number two, uh, Frat has renters, and that's a huge part of their income. Horde has renters, and that's a huge part of their income. It just so happens that the renters are closer to each other than the actual alliances are closer to each other. If you you look at the map, you look at you, you know where those rental spaces are. You kind of scratch your head, you can figure it out, right? So there's sort of like this uh, mutual niceness going on to keep each side's renters from getting dunked on. As a personal human being, I don't really agree with it, but I also understand why it's there and it is what it is. I don't feel particularly content starved because I can just go the other direction, take some different gates, and it to see plenty of people to shoot so I'm, I'm not that bent out of shape about it personally but i also think it's kind of silly uh at the same time this also means that there are some intersections between certain acl rights and we have seen uh i have personally seen frat tethered on structures while then warping off to go whale on some horde and then going back to the structures and i'm guessing just guessing here because i haven't seen it personally I'm guessing Horde is doing the same thing to Frat somewhere. Some Horde people are doing the same thing to Frat because uh, if you give Eve players a way to do something, it doesn't matter if it's underhanded, they'll still do it because they'll gain an advantage. Uh, I, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And also I will say that I am aware there are channels to report such things happening because that is not the intention of the arrangement. Is the arrangement good? Is the arrangement bad? Uh, I, I think all arrangements like that are, are uh, momentary things in the wind. So I don't get too hung up on them. Uh, I I I would like to always have more people to shoot. Um, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think overall resetting was was necessary for either group to have any content in this game. I just knew it'd be sloppy, like them figuring out how to reset and certain allies staying blue and other allies not. So. That, that makes total sense. I was just in, in, interested on hearing um, your perspective from that. Yeah, and uh, Med pasted a uh, statement from Norris. Um, I'm, I'm, I just want to say right now, if uh, and I can say this now because I'm not in Horde, um, if there's space that you expect me to defend and I'm not allowed access to it and I don't see any clear benefit, like... All right, like I guess the clear benefit of uh, of renters, it's like, well, your alliance has money. All right, well, the amount of money that I'm sure Horde makes, especially from the TTT and all the ratting and everything, like it, it's fine. I'm I'm sure Horde makes enough money, and a good portion of those those people renting from Horde are actual Horde members who want their own space and want to put down their own structures, which they can't even anymore because now there's rules where it has to be owned by Horde. Yeah, so, well, those, those rules have been there a while, and Horde isn't the only alliance like that. I, I don't yeah, disagree. I will say this. I have never, to my recollection, even been asked to defend renter space, except in the context of, uh, like, dropping to save Rorks and stuff like that, which is optional. I've never been, like, pressured to do it. And that's just fun because, hey, you get to use your caps for something or whatever. But, uh, you know, and, it, and it's usually, like, a fight worthy of caps. Not always. Sometimes you're just, like, absolutely just wailing on some poor kids yeah, or and kiki gangs but I, I totally agree so like it, it would be different if this was a if this was like some alliances have had problems with in the past where their members end up basically being renter police yeah i'm, I'm not cool with that you should always be getting a benefit out of what you're doing and even the benefit should be fun ultimately like that should be the actual benefit you're getting now sure if uh the benefit you get is like an, an income stream and you find that fun then that's your fun 
but I, I yeah, do but I, agree. I, I, I'm, I'm no one's slave. I'm, I'm not slave to Horde. I'm not slave to anything. But I, I play this game for fun, and if it becomes not fun, I'll find a different thing to do. And so far, that hasn't been a real issue in Horde. But I hear you on that concern. Well, and there. here's the thing, from a renter's perspective too. Like, if a rent, if if you're renting from someone, and like, you know, they're not going to drop to save you. Like, if if you get attacked, then you're you're basically dead. All right, even hell, even structures like they don't guarantee the safety of your structures. So I'm over here thinking, why the fuck would I rent them? Like, so uh, there, there's a little bit of security by implication too. Uh, I, I will say, if you, if you look at the kill board, some of these renter regions, it, it, it's pretty light, and I don't mean that like, oh, they must be doing a great job protecting. I think just the content is so spotty there. I will also say that a lot of that renting that happens is not groups that are like, oh, we're renting to like make our way in the Eve world. And this is like, you know, it's you, you can't use like the real life analogy and be like, yeah, people rent an apartment before they get a house, whatever, right? The vast, vast, vast majority of people renting from null blocks, and, and you can't argue with me on this, uh, their people already have homes and their people already have systems. These are alt alliances, alt corps, or corps who are already within null blocks who just want their own slice of space to do stuff with because either they just want it or they found a way to make, you know, reliable and steady income from it. Uh, th that's that's just the harsh reality of what's going on there. And that, I, I totally agree with that. That's totally fair. But the flip side of that is just just in general, like if you're renting, you know, space and you're paying for it and the alliance isn't going to like drop everything to defend you, but you already have an, another alliance, like, why wouldn't you just go and do your alliance stuff there? Oh, I, like, I, I, make I, your I, there. Like, from the perspective of you want your own little home and you want to have your own little piece, slice of space, yeah, that, okay, I totally get that. I was that way, too. But other than that, I guess I just, like, and this is just me personally, I just don't see any reason to rent. Uh, I, I think for some, some people end up in null blocks and in situations where they're actually in a prohibitive, they feel like they're in a prohibitive circumstance to make money. Um, and I'm not going to say if they're right or wrong because there's way too many circumstances to give a blanket answer to that. Uh, I will say this, and this carries through a lot of these conversations. The vast majority of EVE players and EVE Corps are super bad at finance super super bad at it and they don't do a really good cost benefit analysis i'm super lazy with it but I'll, i i think i can be decent at it when i care enough so i just do lazy things to earn esk and then just don't think about it anymore uh but a lot of people are saying well like well we need this rental system because it brings in this kind of income and that and then we if you run the actual and see what your actual roi is it's pretty low at the same time what i said before still holds true the game is for fun so if it's fun for you to have that rental system, it's fun for you to live that way. Uh, ha have at it. I don't. I don't think there seems to be this vibe. I think from some people that renters and rental alliances and whatever that's ruining the game. Uh, there's a crapload of regions out there, a crapload of space. What else is going to go in there? Like it's, it's very natural that the rental serfdom kind of thing is going to form with any. It's a natural well, outcome. For for us, the rental space like Branch was is is all frat renters, and mm -hmm. most of Paragon Falls is is renters and no value. Um, so for us, it provides like squishier targets. I mean, the what is it? Bot, Sino Up, Optimistic Wasteland. I mean, we've we've ganked works and stuff of 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 them um, without much much response. Um, same thing with branch. Like almost every super that's ever ratted in branch, we've we've killed. Um, so it's nice content for us because a lot of those regions are either in range of us or or super easy for us to get in range of. And I think going back to your point about like people renting and and the idea of of the only way to make isk and nullsec is either being in a null block or being attached to a null block is something that I wish more people realized like wasn't always the case. Cause I mean, we live in MPC venal. Like, yeah, we have a couple like R 64s to mine. Um, but burner missions are arguably one of the best sources of income in the game. 
and there's really no way for anyone to ever stop us from from running burners um you know doing deds things like that like yeah it's a little bit nomadic and it's not you undocking with your ishtar and sitting there and spinning um but i think it's it's something that new players and and even null block players who might have more of a pvp focus can can find as a a, a good home and i think within the the Two years of us living in, in Venal, we've kind of proved that, yeah, we can have a successful alliance, like living in Nullsec that isn't sovereignty, which I feel like there's not many other like super well-known groups in the game that, that can make that same statement. Yeah, I, I can't believe you guys have been up there two years already. Gosh, time flies when you're not having fun, but... uh. That's that's. I think it's great that you that you've been up there two years, been giving people hell. Uh, I I, th I think I've got a few lost mails to prove that, but um, uh, yeah, I think that's fantastic. I think everyone in the game, no matter what they currently are doing or what they enjoy the most, should spend some time homeless and like some random NPC space and just trying to dunk on some kids and join a group like that. I think I think everyone should get that experience out of their eve. Um, th there's upsides, there's downsides, uh, and it also depends on what you're after. What sucks for Brotherhood of Spaces right now? B be honest. Um, what sucks? I would say not a lot. I mean, the only I guess this doesn't suck. It's it's a responsibility that a few of us have taken. But you know, we're, we we don't have the luxury of having you know ten FCs or or, or things like that. You know, there's a few mm -hmm. of us that that do these things. We have a few dudes that you know are running five six accounts hunting spying all that so like it it requires a little bit more effort on individuals um to provide the alliance content um i'd say that's like it, it's it doesn't suck so much that it's like a fun challenge to have because we've seen people grow like immensely under our like way of life um which is which is awesome to see because it, it really makes you a, a good eve pvpr um but yeah sometimes it can be frustrating you know if we if the right people aren't on at the right time we we can't do certain things mm -hmm. um but i mean other than that like the fact that you know november i think we were tied for most super kills out of any other group in the game um, Very nice. and that's including like in its whaling group and, and white sky and, and other groups who kind of just focus on that with well, I know in it, I mean, they're doing it with 100, 150 man Kiki fleets and mm -hmm. we're doing it with, you know, 15 blobs battleships or a couple supers or whatever. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's a different style of gameplay and it, it can be challenging at times and, you know, dude, enemies will get away. We won't have the target. He won't be out when we thought he would be. So, you know, it's it's a lot of setting up and trying and and failing, but also when you set up and it works and you get that super or jump freighter or whatever it is, I mean, the, the, the payout feels like better than if I was just an F1 monkey in a fleet whoring on a, on a capital kill. Sure. I can feel that. So, so if only you just had more people, you could do more things. And then if you got more people on top of that, you could do even more things. And the next thing you know, uh, you're living out, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> Correct. But for now, you get to be the good kind of villain out there, wreaking all kinds of havoc. Uh, so, Med, you only have two ran two renters in Branch. That's it. Just two. Med, come on the show. We we got to talk. Let's wrap. Yeah, we'll get we'll get Med here. Get 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 Med here. So real quick, uh, before we get off topic, uh, I just want to say that uh, one of I want to do a quick announcement, uh, but between two keep stars, uh, we'll be starting the, uh, well, our very first sort of fundraiser. Um, as many of you know, a lot of the backgrounds for our show have just been random keep stars that we found. Um, and we decided, you know what? Uh, the name of the show is between two keep stars. So we're, I've talked it over with each and by talked it over, I mean, I said, Hey, we're doing this. Um, we're starting a Between Two Keep Stars fundraiser to get us our own official Keep Star. This is a Keep Star that will be available to everyone, services available to everyone. Um, 
and yeah, so if you're interested in helping us out, you know, me and each are each, you know, giving some money and working to do it, uh, send money to, it's called the Between Two CEOs character in EVE Online. Just make sure to say uh, Between Two Keep Stars Keep Star donation and uh, yeah, it'll go into that ISK pool. You well, guys want to anchor them in Venal? We'll, uh, we'll help you. Uh, we we're keeping it secret where we're anchoring them, but the idea is that it's going to be essentially, well, one to sort of immortalize the show. Is just hey, 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 guys! It's called it's called between two keep stars. We now have a keep star with a cool look, with our the cool show logo on it, and everyone's going to be able to use it essentially. So that's the and, plan. Uh... And for those asking, why not two keep stars? Well, y y you ask for one, and then you go for the second one, right? We uh, we've got some plans for that. Um, I know I'm I'm gonna be working on doing it. I'm working on making up the isk. Just just just, just think if you donate enough, enough, if you donate enough out of the kindness of your heart, if you are generous enough, this show could be between three keep stars. And isn't no, that we're not gonna isn't that worth it? <laughs> yeah, see, we need like a keep star between keep stars. Exactly. I like it. I like yeah. it. I'll, no, so uh, I'll send my donation. So yeah, uh, I'll put the character in chat right now. So let me just quickly uh, make sure I'm getting the name correct. So r right now I am, I am already making a corp uh, for it. Uh, so the name is... Yep. Okay. Hey, and for the people wanting to join the the New Eden Post Discord, if you just scroll down your little Twitch streamy thing, you'll see there's an About New Eden Post section, and you'll see that there's a Discord link. Just click that. That'll get you in the Discord. And if you want to be on the show, join the Drag Me channel, and then we will start dragging you, um, and we will force you to talk about whatever you want to talk about, and then come up with something you don't want to talk about, and try to get you to talk about that. Because that is our talent. Probably our only talent, really. That's really all we're good for. That's why we're sitting here. Uh, so I, I just linked in chat the name of the character uh, for the for this sort of uh, fundraiser. Um, and yeah, help us make the show at least semi between two keep stars. Right, right. Well, it's all got to start somewhere. So we have Mad now. We have Mad. And again, that character is between two CEOs. So I'm I'm done with my spiel. It's a good spiel. Hey, it's hey. a worthy cause. What's up, Mad? What's going on? What's up? So, t two renters and branch. That's that's some extensive that's some extensive rental pool. Yeah, our rental empire is growing every day. Excellent. Uh, it's a little hard because um, we spend so much time killing them that they lose their money that they're making. So it's hard for them to pay rent and us rent. But you know, we we're working on it. That's the one thing we miss um, with the cloaky camping changes, because I know people bitched and bitched and bitched for years about AFK cloaky camping, but mm -hmm. I really disagreed with that change because it's the one thing that gives smaller groups an advantage against the big blocks, and and we did that. I mean, Med certainly did that. Um, we actually had corporation rental corporations paying us rent along with their landlords for us not to cloaky camp so that was a large <laughs> source of income for us for for a couple months but doesn't it but really the... just mean uh, your, your cloaky camper needs to be n not afk and actually tabbed into their cloaky camper but, is that really the worst thing yes yes it is because you want to be online as much as possible and play mm -hmm. at random times so they don't know if you're there. I mean, if you're in a null block and you're on comms, you're in standing fleet, whatever, like you should be fine. Like we're we're doing a service to the game, you know, with with botting, AFK crabbing, AFK ish, not paying attention, like the same way you're making but us now pay attention when we're all logged in, like you should have been paying attention crabbing when you were logged in. Oh, I absolutely think everyone logged in should be paying attention, but I think that should include cloaky campers. I'm good with it, so long as... Uh, I'm good with changes that make cloaky campers have to okay, pay attention, okay, but so long as all, everyone has to pay but attention. Say, 
but saying that, oh, well, you know, we're helping the game and we're, you know, stopping bots and all that stuff. I mean, that's kind of a cop out because like if someone's botting, like they don't care if, you know, they get dropped on however many times they're just going to keep botting. But when they're supers and they die, I mean. Yeah. Uh, I also, so this is, this is the same issue and, and uh, don't take this the wrong way or do because that can be more interesting. But this is the same issue I take with code and safety and some other groups, right? Because they say we're removing the game of a great sin. We're purging the game of botters and AFK, uh, in their case, autopiloters, right? And they say this, this is the people we're ganking. And that's like a, a 1% or less minority for them. And I got to say, it's probably like a, you know, of the actual botters, uh, uh, just being realistic, it's probably like a 0.5% percent uh minority for the vast majority groups if you've had a wildly different experience and can back that up with like some interesting evidence like especially video evidence that'd be fascinating to see um My but for for most people what you're really dunking on is just the people who are granted not paying attention and should be and they deserve to die i don't don't get me wrong i have no sympathy for someone that you dunk on when you're blopsing i don't care who they are even if it's me even if it's my friends whatever no sympathy but but I also think that if you're going to come dunk, you should also have to attend. If the game is making it too easy for anyone to do anything this game, utterly unattended, I think it should always get harder, so long as the rewards are commensurate, commensurate with the risks, which has been a, a big imbalance question lately. The the other argument that I'll make, and, and I'll this was from Adicia posted about this on Reddit. He was a Volta FC who's now in Snuffed. Um, was a lot of like the content creators in this game would rely on some level of cloaky camping to keep eyes in places to see what was going on. Cause most groups are gonna try to seize upon spotting out idiots being idiots or or even you you take frat staging for example where you know, last weekend we killed, like, three marauders in their staging with 250 people in it. But, like, part of that is because of being able to have multiple tunes logged in in different places, keeping eyes, without constantly having to worry about getting getting moboed. So, I mean, it's, it's something that anyone could take advantage of um, <laughs> to help provide content for their alliance. But these changes have been in the game for a while now, and you were guys were just able to do it and if you guys are using them for eyes anyway like it's it's once every 15 minutes like that's like a couple of characters you know resetting their cloak once every 15 minutes like is it's not the end of the world yeah i i i, I, have, I have a hard time being sympathetic to anyone complaining about that <laughs> the granted, cloak if destabilization if it's, F, if it's an fc doing it then i can totally understand but in that case you should say hey you know, people need to step up and, you know, make these characters, which are very, very easy to make. Like, making a guy who can sit in a ship and cloak up is really, like, not that time-consuming. So... Yeah, yeah. I know I'm in the minority with, with this opinion. I mean, it was nice for me just to wake up in the morning, log in campers, and when I was working remote, like, lunch break, okay, there's, you know, a couple dudes ratting under my eyes. Let's, let's kill them. Um, it's definitely lazy form of pvp and i get why it's out of the game now it's just it, it is one thing that allows smaller groups to to outpunt or i guess stretch their limits on 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 potential kills and here's yeah, the thing that's the big point and, and that's and that's totally fair you know you there's there's a play style that people enjoyed and you know that people did and it's it, you know it was it was their rhythm and their rhythm got disrupted and you know they were pissed about it that's totally like yeah i understand that you know when something that you like about the game and that you've been doing for a long time changes it's it, it makes things it makes things hard and you know sometimes it's difficult to adjust but adjust we must and honestly, I think the cloaking, it, for all of the, the talk about the different ways that cloaking might be resolved and all the theory crafting, I was actually, like, for example, I was a big fan of the idea of having cloak require fuel, uh, which I think would actually be more favorable to your style of play than the current outcome. But I, all the same, I think this current outcome is, is, is fairly, like, lukewarm in terms of how bad it could have been. 
for cloaky campers. I, I, I do believe strongly. Cloaky camping is a very valid form of the game. Yeah, it's annoying for people, and I get why people get annoyed. I get why people in my corp come cry in our Discord that certain uh, money-making ventures we have are endangered or threatened by people cloaky camping around them. Uh, but I also tell them to suck it up and get in PvP ships and start PvPing, and that's it. That, or to, uh, better yet, to bait the cloaky campers, because nothing feels better than dunking the See? dunkers. See, I'm, I, I'm a huge fan of that. I just think it should be a push and pull to each side. I think each yeah. side should have to have an active participation. If that cloaky camper is a truly active participant, more power to them, and may they dunk on my corp and me personally forever until I get good enough at EVE to not get dunked on, or like I said, better yet, dunk them back. That's the way it should be. But when there's this, this ability to sit in a system and turn it into a passive income stream, just because you pressed log on and then F1 and then walked away for a year? Eh. Eh. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Yeah, I agree. And I think, and the way I think too, like you could get people who their entire gameplay is just like extorting money from nerds, you know, just by cloaky camping like this, like, because now it's not as easy to do, we might actually see some people. I mean, hell, I'm thinking about doing it now because I literally have no blues and I can go and do this because, you know, fuck everyone who's not my alliance. Um, I, you could make actual income streams and actual like jobs in Eve. Yeah. I mean, it, it hasn't really stopped us from, from doing anything. Um, I think we've probably gotten shinier kills after the changes i think that had a lot to do with certain people joining us and coming back to the game and and, and things like that and and kind of seeing what we're doing uh-huh you're gonna um, talk about that later yeah it's just an adjustment um mm -hmm. but yeah no you're gonna talk about the people coming back to the game so uh, oh, yeah. i mean we had a couple uh, i mean marshy recently joined there Boss it is Alliance. There which it is. Was, which was cool. And I mean, I used to run a lot of Spectre fleets back in the day and, and loved the MPSI community. Um, I did that a lot when we were in Boss 1.0 because um, we didn't really have many blues then. And certainly now we hardly have any. Um, but yeah, I mean, he kind of saw what we were doing with Blops and always down to, to drop shit. And, and I mean, nothing's more fun than YOLOing Blops onto things. Um, it's given us so much joy and, and, and content and the changes that they did to blops and conduiting is is fucking top notch for for sure like i'm a huge fan i'm gonna agree there of, yeah. of those changes and and buffing um especially the redeemer and the widow i mean if you guys look at our kill boards i think those are like the two blops we we use the most and maybe our top ships um but yeah, I mean that's been that's been so much fun, and especially with the the, the changes of prices and in, in capitals, um, not being able to yolo a, a dread bomb like you used to, kind of resorted in us changing some of our strategies when when going for targets and mm -hmm. being able to to blops in you know fifteen blops battleships that are all doing well over a thousand DPS is just as good as as dread bombing um, a, a super or something. Um, I mean, we've we have we've had a couple kills where we've 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 killed a super just with Blops battleships, um, and that's been that's been really nice and and something that um, I think we've we've kind of started taking full advantage of. Yeah, I've seen you get uh, seen you guys get a, a couple of pr pretty nice dunks, uh, some pretty pretty admirable dunks that are not just the usual. Uh... 200 kikis coming out but actually get it catching a super out at just the right time uh yeah uh so karama just dropped into chat a uh, br uh, relevant there no, um it's not relevant. Uh, oh it's not relevant okay no, i guess no, I, I, I tried to guess that it'd be relevant. that's not relevant at all what the hell is this not oh okay oh, i know what this God. is never mind hey. yeah Dude, okay dunked people with a bunch of marshals yeah 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 what's it uh, yeah that's whatever um so yeah, that's that's pretty uh, that's that's pretty good, and and I'm 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 glad to see all the groups out there doing that. I think it's interesting. Uh, what what's Marshy's history? Why why did Marshy join Boss? I didn't see that coming. I gotta say. Yeah, I mean, he just 
Well, one, our, our, the only real blues that we have is is Rocapel. Mm -hmm. There are there are family. Um, we support them in their defense of Navola. Um, so other than them, we don't really have blues. And he just kind of saw us wailing um, with you know, 20 guys and VEDMAX or BLOPs or whatever we were using and just kind of saw it as a, a chance for some of the guys that were coming back into into the game with him and his corp to have consistent content because he's always traveling and, and has different time zones and things like that that he plays on. Um, right. Just a way to, to have some support with, with us, like people who can competently hunt, have blue eyes, things like that. To kind of help spread his his reach um, for for content, and also I guess provide a group that that he saw kind of aligned with with his interests of you know fighting outnumbered, whaling, going after big fish, and kind of an all or nothing sort of mindset. Okay, okay, I can get it. Uh, bring bring Marshy on the show next time too. Yeah, yeah. Next time, bring, yeah, when bring, he, I think he's traveling right now. But yeah, when he's back, for sure. Bring Marsh in. We can talk about cloak destabilization when you're doing it by the the dozens, the hundreds of alts. And uh, can... <laughs> yeah, I don't think he has that many accounts subbed anymore. Uh there, there, there's a shocker. Does anybody? Does is anybody still doing it at that scale? Uh, I believe uh, she's still doing it, or is at least planning on doing it again. Hmm. Is a uh, hard knocks cloak. Yeah, 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 yeah. More power to him. I, I wonder how that's faring for him, given cloak destabilization, given the changed game economy, and given the the, the dearth of Oracles out, which is the next thing I want to ask about. Uh, I, I, I wonder if the people with the dozens and up of cloaky campers, uh, if, that, if that's really going to continue to be a valid play style. Um, what's the Rourke situation for you guys dunking? How how is that? Yeah, I was actually looking at our Eve War report, like against Frat and their, um, well, I guess all of Pan Fam against us, and a lot, well, a couple of the top kills are are Oracles. Many of them we we caught with um, Rote Capel, Blopsing. Mm -hmm. Um, some of them were us working with a couple of the um, Kiki groups, killing them. Um. For a while, Frat stopped Oracle mining completely in U.S. time zone. Yep. I still think they they don't do it as as much as probably other groups in the game in U.S. time zone. Um, but that was mainly because you had Boss Alliance, you had Snuff, you had Tissue, you had Rote, kind of all hunting and and sharing intel and and working together to try to take down some of these larger targets. Um, I know they're starting to build back some confidence in their late U.S. time zone or early EUTZ um, using supers again, just dropping supers on their own without subcaps, things like that. Um, so, right. I mean, a lot of the works we've killed, though, have been from some of the renters. Um, I got to find the one, the Azure one, where we dunked them with some supers in a system, in a incursion system. Um it, 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 it isn't isn't dunking on Azure so to say a little bit of shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, be honest, just a, just a little bit of fish barrel syndrome. I mean, we got to use our supers, man. And and I mean, and Azure did flash form for that one and had a dragonic fleet there before we even got off grid. True. That's yeah, that's, that's admirable. They'll, they'll I, that, defend their renters. I linked I, it in the Discord. I think just from. <sighs> It, maybe maybe I'm biased here. Just aren't spending enough time in, in horde renter space. But I think horde and frat I've seen be more responsive in general than other blocks when it comes to renters, and that comes from entering the systems and messing with renters a bit. But I must preface that with I haven't been messing with frat renters lately because of the aforementioned uh, if objectionable uh, agreement, and so I just go look for other renters to mess with. So. But it does seem like uh, that they scramble pretty quickly. Frat, especially if especially if you catch them on their time zone, I gotta say their their responses can be pretty remarkable sometimes. Like uh, pretty admirable how fast they can get a uh, fleet scrambled. Yeah, they have to gate like three regions over, which with jump bridges isn't too bad. But um, Kaladrius usually is quick to form for branch big targets like supers or works. 
I will so, say Frat's probably the best group to run from because they'll actually defend your structures if we were to make a shield timer for the armor every time. That's that's nice. That's nice. I, I like the I the, the forming for shield timers is a thing I wish more people would do. And uh, not because structure fights are fun. Quite frankly, they're not. But uh, fights are fun, and it, it's it's fun when people actually want to like form and fight around something like a. Uh, so before some of the best fights I've had in Eve have been over freaking Pocos. It's just because people wanted to fight. Like that's what it was. It was like, all right, it's time to fight finally. And uh, th there needs to be lots of that mentality in my mind. Lots of that. I asked Med to post, um, it's like our year-long war report. Um, you can see it has a couple of our Fortizar timer, or Fortizar kills on it. Um, at one point, Frat did form like 600 or so dudes to kill our staging Fortizars. Um, we've re-anchored more since, and sort of have a gentleman's agreement with Norris. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's our, our year-long war report. I asked Med to link it in the chat. Yeah, I, I see that. So, I mean, on Twitch, but I posted it in Discord. Yeah, it's in Discord. So if you guys want to see that war report, uh, which can be pretty interesting, you need to join the Discord and check it out. Not that we're trying to force you to join the Discord or anything, but that's exactly what we're doing. So join the Discord if you want to see that uh, war report. Um, so, so let me ask you guys this, since you're actually on the 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 um, the non-winning end of this, uh, as opposed to a lot of people I talked to are adamantly against the idea. But do you think that jump bridges and zablexes should reintroduce the fatigue mechanic? Meaning that taking a uh, jump bridge should give you a jump fatigue. I mean, when I was in test, I mean, it was super nice to to have it and. I, I get why they exist. I mean, it, it is it is convenient. I think mm -hmm. with the changes to shuttles being just interdiction nullified, super fast ways of moving, that it's still easy to move around with without jump bridges. Um, I don't know. I I don't know if there's an issue with them. It, it is annoying when a group can travel three jumps over pretty quickly to defend something or to respond to something. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I guess that it's is, that is the issue, right? Like yeah. the fact that a group can control four regions because they can just gate five jumps to go four regions over is bad for the game, in my opinion, because it prevents the existence of places like tribute prior to frat coming, where you had a bunch of small groups filling the air gap between larger groups. Yep, my so I I actually agree, and I'm on I'm on the bene the beneficiary end of of jump bridges many times. I'm also on the losing end of that, because when I want to go PvP and stuff, it is annoying to me that a relatively small group of people can take bridges and cross a region like 10 times faster. I do think there should be a home field advantage. I'm a big believer in home field advantage. But I think there should be a slight jump fatigue added to jump bridges when you take them. I think this solves two different problems. One, it means you can't just take six jump bridges and cross three regions. Because you would actually have some waiting time in between there. You can still do it. Just like when they added jump fatigue to caps. You know, before when people would cross all of New Eden overnight. And you can't do that anymore. So you'd still do it. Just take time. The second is uh, the good old trick of uh, abusing Anzablexes to yeet some caps through. And just suffer the ozone cost. End up on the other end. And then just take a nice healthy jump. And get, and get much farther than you should be able to go in, say, a super or something like that. I think it should just be more a risk mechanic to Anzablexes. I do think that home field advantages should exist. And I'd be open to some interesting ideas about uh, further home field advantages that could exist that don't exist today. I just think Anzablexes as they stand make it too easy for a relatively small number of active players, PvP players, to sprawl out over a very large area. And I think it actually shuts out and precludes the ability for more uh, rising power PvP groups. Uh, so Loki was on last week talking about his dream for Hero Coalition, how he believes that the goal of a sustaining uh, NullSec alliance, a NullSec coalition, should be projection of power. I think projection of power is limited by mechanics, like Ansiblexes, unfavorably. And I would like to see more new groups. I, wanna, I wish the best for Boss. I wish the best for Hero Coalition. 
and all of those groups. I want to see more groups fill pockets, but I feel like uh, rising up to above a certain threshold is quickly quashed down because where are you going to operate to project that power out of when people can cross six regions and three regions and, you know, a, a matter of minutes? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. I think at some point some changes will need to be done, but I mean, I think there's also some changes that should be done to certain solve mechanics as well. Um, Cause I mean, we saw the game kind of end in a stalemate with uh, the whole goon war. Um, you know, they were able to, to hold on to one pocket and, and that's all they, they needed to, to kind of eventually have things come to a, a screeching halt. Um there's really no way now for groups to big groups to evict other big groups um, without the help of more big groups, which I think can be fun in certain fights, but isn't a mechanic or play style that everyone enjoys because sitting in a six hour long tie dye fight is, I think might be fun the first couple times, but isn't always fun for everyone. <laughs> I, think, I think that's an absurdly polite way of putting it. Uh, I mostly agree. I do think that the war could have gone differently if certain groups had learned how to diversify their income and investments and hadn't had to uh, quit overnight and abandon their allies. But, you know, that that is what it is. Not that I have any feelings about it. I also think that it's ridiculous that a you can simultaneously control a vast swath of an empire... Thanks to the mobility, Anzablex's grant, among other things, not just Anzablex's, but that's one thing. You can simultaneously uh, have that the vast control, but also get everything you need out of a microscopic portion of that because of the lack of diversity of resources. And uh, so uh, this is... <sighs> If I have to give a hope for Prosperity Quadrant based on what I'm, I, I've seen so far and what's been talked about so far, maybe there's some hope here that resources will get more meaningfully distributed. And I don't mean who has the resources. That's, that's pointless to, for CCP to try to over-effect, I think. Uh, but what I do think is that where you can get resources and where you can build forward in the future, I'm actually a big fan of heavy diversification for that and making it difficult to achieve that entire set to basically have the complete self-sustaining industry should actually be a lot harder. Yeah. I mean, for us, like the prices affected our actions a little bit in terms of, of capitals. Um, but I, I see how for certain groups and, 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 and blocks that it can be more of a challenge to, to do that. I mean, I know Frat's been pushing for different ways to diversify their income. And I know one of the reasons Norris wanted to, to move to Vale and Tribute was the access to, to LOSEC and the certain resources that LOSEC provides compared to NullSec. So in that regards, they were you know forward thinking. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think uh, there have been a few groups that have, in different ways, been forward thinking about this. I think it will serve them in the future. Uh, I, I think right now it it doesn't matter enough. Um, I, I, I just believe that if you want to have an empire in EVE, and empire building is absolutely a big part of different people's gameplay, whether they're actually actively involved in building the empire or they're just participating in the empire both are very equally valid play styles i just think that empire shouldn't be able to sustain itself with like say three to four systems and that that actually be a sustainable way to operate and to build it, it should be a lot harder than it actually was uh while i recognize the hardships that happen when you get trapped when helms deep became helms shallow <laughs> and all of that uh, I recognize the hardships that goons, especially the non-established goons, meaning the people who didn't already have their trillions. Uh, I, I recognize some of the hardships they were under. All the same, it needs to be harder, and not just harder for them. It's, it's all about making it harder for everybody. And the reason that it needs to be harder for everybody is to be clear, because CCP, I think, sometimes misses this mark. You don't make it harder 
because people will be like, oh, now they'll really enjoy the game and they'll really sub more accounts because it's harder than ever. It's so that you can create a better reward opportunity because one of the interesting things about EVE, when it's done right, when it's balanced, air quotes correctly, because it's never going to be balanced fully correctly, when it's balanced air quotes correctly, is every change to the economy and every uh, improvement or disparagement to people's isk making ability as a new PvP opportunity opened. That's the way it should be. We've talked about many cases where it's not, like the gated instances and the single pilot instances where one ship can go in and nobody else can go in. Crap like that. It's nonsense. But if you talk about something like diversifying how a NullSec Empire has to operate where they can't get all the resources where they are, perhaps not even within their entire region they can't get all those resources. Now they are forced to diversify, which makes them more vulnerable. But it also gives them more reason to engage in other content in the game besides a little region that they're sequestered in until they get kicked out and move to yet another region. Or, as you hinted at before, never get kicked out and just stay there and then it's just a static, you know, non-moving thing. You know, the last big regional shakeup we had was Frat going to the north and that was, you know, writing on the wall was really clear there and that was more of a a power play than it was like, you know, some formalized eviction. Yes, of course, is what happened to Test and to Brave and happened for like five minutes to eye it, but uh, the, the, those don't count in the same way. We haven't seen a lot of map shakeup like we had seen and enjoyed in the past because so many of the things that caused shakeup in the past are solved problems now. And I don't even mean that necessarily because of EVE changes, although some of it is CCP's doing. Some of it's just players figuring things out and getting better at those things. And so we need we need counterbalance to that. We need forced diversification. And that's what I'm hoping could come out of Prosperity Quadrant in some sense. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely uh, agree. I mean, I think some of these indie changes will be, will be good. I mean, people are going to complain no matter what happens. That's just EVE Online. <laughs> Um, but if, but if, yeah, if I people think... didn't complain, this game would have actually died. Like the right, way people yeah, say it's going right. to die every month. Like the fact that people are complaining is why the game hasn't died. Uh, I, I've yeah. been I've been through my share of dead games, and and what happens is people do stop complaining, and then also the studio kind of gives up for whatever reason. Like let's say for... you know EA ruins them. Right. I mean, cough, hey, cough, for, for us, for us, we the more capitals, the more workles out there, the 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 better. It gives us more more targets and more times and hey that's that's what we're always looking for so yeah exactly and uh M mental tier makes a good point in twitch chat he's up with the compression changes allowing for easier transportation and maybe a hint at resource uh diversification like where resources are located i think it's a good point and i think it's an interesting one um it, it would be good <sighs> It would be good to see something like that, where there's a reason to move around. There's also a reason to have interests in other areas. Uh, because th there's two different things I see that go on. So I, t I talked extensively about uh, the NullSec empires and their ability to sequester in a region or in a few systems and, and do everything they need to, which I don't think anybody should be able to do, Horde included. But also there's people who can build everything they need out of high sec, and I don't think that should be possible either. I don't mean that so region, you know, uh, entire playstyle should be rendered invalid. I mean that you should have to engage in a number of activities to get things done. This is this is why I wanted to see the mining bar changes shake out a little bit differently and be less about defense and more about offensive capability. I think if you want to be a successful miner, you should have to be a successful PvPer. Now, some miners will disagree and say, well, it's already that way. But let's be honest, most of mining PvP is about avoiding PvP, and I get it. You don't want to. You, I don't want a Hulk that is equal in power to say uh, Osprey Navy issue or something. I'm not crazy, but the I last do mean. Crab ship I lost was my Oracle, and that was to a wormhole dude awoxing me and and getting into our corp and awoxing me. That was the only time we've lost. Owned. <laughs> yeah, and the, and we live in a, a a place without a super umbrella. So that just goes to show if you're not a complete idiot, you're chances of surviving in a work is somewhat high i've been tackled four times with my rourke without any like backup and we've gotten it out every time the number of rourke deaths that happen 
where you just look at it and say, well, this guy was screwed. It didn't matter his skills. It didn't matter what happened. He was just screwed. The number of those that happen is like, I'm going to say one in a thousand. And that, that might be, that might be a, a little too kind. I can tell you from, you know, participating in the drops, uh, from uh, dropping on, and from just watching, uh, most of these things, yeah, the writing was on the wall that you were in danger. Like, like let's say, oh, I don't know, how about the story of the guy who gets tackled in his work, gets held, and then they actually didn't get enough guys, uh, the enemy, did not get enough guys in the response fleet... So they said, you're lucky this time. Go back through the wormhole, the open wormhole in the same system, right? Go back through that wormhole and leave. What does the guy do? That's right. He undocks the rock again and goes back to mining because you're lucky this time meant to him that surely he could spend the rest of the night semi-AFK mining in his oracle, which died a few hours later. Oh, or, you know, heads. the people who see a enemy come in system and warp on their overview and immediately hit panic and aren't in any kind of comms. Et cetera, et cetera. We can go on and on about it's stupid mistakes. Panic, you, know? you, you get scared, you hit panic. Yeah, you, you, you peer pants. Panic and peer pants, right. So that, that seems to be the the average uh, uh, response there. And, and uh, my favorite is like a bait rourke, and, and I see that really as a dying breed right now because... Uh, Lots of the changes happening and, and lots of what's going on right now. I, I think this this seems to be just following a few kill reports, less bait works out there than ever. And that's that's a real shame because uh, I I always thought that was super cool, uh, where you'd see uh, four works just absolutely dunk a blopped fleet because hey they were all bait tanked and all fit for PvP and ready to go. Uh, that that's pretty good stuff. Yeah, works Ror are hard to kill in blops battleships and and unless. You catch them gating like we did the other day. It's <laughs> usually not going to pan out in, in your favor at all. We generally leave articles alone because we just don't have the DPS or numbers to break them most of the time. Yeah. See, it's and this is just like... 15 people, it's very hard to kill a Rorge without like a Leshak Doctrine or something. Oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you need you need Leshaks, and then you're exposing yourself to an all, a whole other kind of risk because now uh, if, if somebody sees Kiki's out, like they're going to be like, oh, I guess we'll go save that Rorge because an excuse to use our caps or an excuse to undock in our subcaps, whatever. But when people see a Leshak fleet, they get blood in their mouths and, 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 and poison on their tongue and they will go absolutely, you know, 26 jumps to go dunk on you and light sinos, whatever. So, yeah, it's it's definitely challenging. I'm just a big fan in general when we talk about PvP encounters, especially, actually, especially when it comes to PvE type stuff, so PvE versus PvP. So we're talking like mining ships, you know, all the way up to Rorquals, all the way down to Ventures, and like Ishtars and ratting ships, stuff like that. It should be much more about offense, than defense uh, for their survivability. I would actually be okay with a significant DPS buff to a Rorqual if it came with a meaningful change to their tanking ability. And that meaningful change of the tanking ability can't include resists because as we discussed last week, uh, the resists are utterly boned right now and they're stupid for everyone, including for Rorks. The 20% nerf never should have happened, etc. But I'd be okay with an interesting exchange where, because now a group of 15, right? If you know this work can put out a lot more DPS than works classically have, you can mitigate that. There are ways to deal with that as 15 people, whereas dealing with a massive tank of a work, what's, you know, what's your option besides Lashak Fleet, like you said? Or, you know, going all capitals, which has its own problems. And then, you know, that's just more capital warfare when people want to see more subcap stuff happening. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I do really like that change idea, swapping the DPS and tank bonuses. Because now, now you can talk yeah, about things like, 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 like you can bring a falcon and jam the exactly. Drone. That's exactly where it's going. Like E War is such a uh, it, it's such a cool thing in this game. So when when I first joined Eve, when I, when I first started playing Eve, I posted in Reddit. This is back in 2014 when I started. I posted in Reddit, hey. In other MMOs I played, which that, by the way, is an instant way to get downvoted on our Eve. Go try it. Go, go pretend to be a new bro and say in other MMOs I played and then say anything you want. It doesn't matter what you say after that. You could actually, like, type in Swahili. Instant hate. But I said in other MMOs I played, 
I really liked playing crowd control type characters. That's why I would usually pick like a tank or something. I said in the post, I said, I realize in Eve there are not tanks and stuff like that. And I'm glad for that. But what I want to know is what's crowd control like in, in Eve? How do you do that sort of thing? Is there some kind of crowd control mechanic? What I was looking for there, I didn't know it, but what I was looking for there was the answer was Ewar. But instead, people wanted to lecture me about, ah, this isn't anything like WoW, which I never played. Uh, this isn't anything like the other MMOs. There, there is no crowd control. There's no tanks. Well, yeah, there are. There's huge crowd control, and it's with Ewar. And Ewar is a huge force multiplier, except when it isn't. And the main time that it isn't, the main time Ewar becomes rendered largely irrelevant is when something can just sit there and take a beating from 15 freaking ships forever. I'm not saying a rook should pop. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying a rook should get popped by you know 10 caracals shooting at it for you know one, one clip of missiles. It should be a tanky thing. It's a capital ship. Uh, but there's a balance. Sorry, I'm trying to chase down this Moa. <laughs> yeah, Nim's trying to kill Shira right now. He's very focused. Yeah, I'll get, I'll I've be. just been getting Moa PvP, 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 best PvP. PvP. Like, like y'all have been just talking and basically doing my job for me. So I thank you for that. We're good at that. Uh, impo important change of topic. Karama, how was your birthday? Uh, I ate fried chicken and sorbet. Nice. Excellent. Sounds like an awesome birthday. Happy birthday. And I learned that I got blacklisted by goons. So. <laughs> Is that a present? Well, 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 welcome, welcome to the ever-growing extensive blacklist of goons that even they don't know what it's for anymore. Listen, I, I don't know why. Um, it could have... The more like I go through and audit my tunes, the more I realize, shit, it could be for anything. You want to know my favorite thing about null block blacklists? It's the utter quantity of people who can go and look and see why they're on that blacklist because they have access to the blacklist on their other character. That's that's probably my favorite thing about them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you if you blacklist someone, just remember uh, the notes you put in there. Someone else may be able to see that. Not that I would know. Uh, I love getting blacklisted, but not even um, getting kicked from the group. Uh, yeah, that that's a thing too. That's a thing too. Uh, I won't say anything. I won't say anything. But yes, I'm I, I'm aware of that kind of thing. Uh, when, when it's it's knowing left that way. Yoshi, you deserve to be blacklisted from Horde. That's all I'll say. All right, I want to one shot wanna... keep stars. Um, you can. Wait, what did Yoshi do? You, no, you yeah, can one Yoshi shot did. a keep star. It's called. Yeah, we had a story time this. Uh, no, we're not going to story time that. I want to talk about one shot and keep stars instead. You can one shot a keep star. Uh, the ship is called a Karen. C H A R O N. Look it up, and then just uh, wait for the unanchor timer. The no, just look. Wait for the unanchor timer. Right click, scoop the cargo. Keep star one shot. Uh, because that has happened three times in Eve that I'm aware of to a keep star, which is pretty funny. Uh, two of the three, I think, ended with the keep star being destroyed. One of them, uh, the, the keep star was actually gained by the other side, which is pretty freaking hilarious. Abyssal siege modules on a titan. Yeah, yeah. Do do we want to talk about? Do we want to talk about this this fun exploit? Uh, did did anybody suffer from it? Was anybody, if you or someone you know suffered from abyssal siege modules on titans, you may be subject and due to kind of some compensation. That's my that's my lawyer ad for it, but. Did, it, did anybody see this? Did anybody see it happening? The Abyssal Sieges on the Titan? I just used my, my Titan to um, uh, move freighters around, so it didn't <laughs> affect me. Uh, the, 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 the true end game of Eve, moving freighters. <laughs> no, it, it's it's true. That's, that, that, right, that, hey, bro, do you mind logging in so uh, I can move my freighter? <laughs> Autopiloting through high sec and moving freighters is the end game of Eve. So if you're if you're a new bro and wondered what does the end game look like, that's it. Uh, you can ask Black Bart. You, you you can ask anybody in here. It is it is the actual end game of Eve. But uh, yeah. So well, it was good. I mean, CCP took quick action against it because I guess it was frat and snuffed, kind of accusing each other of it for a potential fight that never happened. Um. <laughs> As so. usual with these exploits, uh, with very few exceptions, 
It's a bunch of people who get super worked up and say this is going to destroy everything and everybody should be due from free stuff from CCP and, and nothing actually came of it or ever happened. Uh, I've only talked to one person who actually saw an abyssal fitted to a Titan and the context for him seeing this was his friend doing it and saying, this is effing hilarious. After they found out about it, then he docked his Titan up and did nothing with it because he didn't want to get banned. Uh, but they, they so didn't play with it. Was using it. Oh, I, I know there were people you, using There were definitely people using it. Using it. You, yeah. You, Wait, you guys can dock your Titan somewhere? Man, that must be nice. Isn't it, though? Isn't it nice? Yeah, you can, you can actually, if you look in the background, if you squint there, there there's something boss may never see again, which is a <laughs> Titan after a nice long bridge cycle preparing to actually right click and dock in a structure. So yeah, you, you, you can mouth water over that boss, but um, you could retort with, well, at least we get some PVP content, which is not yeah, untrue. Undocking takes up too much time than just logging in and bridging. I mean, you that's, gotta- That's true, that's yeah, true all the time. Yeah, yeah you so. don't have a thought at the Titan landing either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you changing sk skins while you're warping in? I mean, who doesn't love that? Is the show being run by PH guys? Uh, I, I am from PH. Karama is former PH. Is it being run by PH guys? Uh, I am in PH and not of it. Just meaning I'm not any part of the official structure and don't want to be. So, uh, no is the answer. I definitely ta I definitely uh, talk some smack about PH where I think it's important. And also, I'm much more interested in what's going on with Eve overall. Martok, feel free to come on the show. Set us straight. I want to get this guy in here. He seems to have some strong feelings. I love strong feelings. Come in. Tell me how stupid I am. I hear it all the time. Is this going to be another case of someone who wants to come in the Twitch chat and get mad but not join the show? I just got brain aids. That should serve you well. That's a good way to play Eve. Eve is brain aids. I'm sorry with your ailment. I hope you feel better. Come back next wow. week. Come on the show. We'll give you first spot. You can talk about whatever you want. <laughs> this this is how we this is how we get all our, our good Pretty content. League of Legends podcast. <laughs> we should do a non Eve show sometime. We should come up with like a bunch of things to talk about that aren't Eve, but it can't be Foxes either. No, that's that that's gonna happen. I, I'll I'll be sure to be magically sick at that time. I'm gonna get so violently ill. But but what if the what if the special guest is on during that show? That would be that would be an utterly dirty trick of you to do because I am not missing that special guest. We do That's have a special it. guest coming to the show. We're not going to say who it is. Uh, it is going to be freaking magnificent. You are going to want to tune in. Uh, who is the guest going to be? When is it going to happen? I guess you're just going to have to listen every week until it does. But it is going to happen, and it's going to be a hell of a guest. So we know it's going to happen eventually. It is going to happen. It is a matter of it is a matter of when, not if. Special guest when is exactly the right question. Um, come on every Sunday. Unlike the rotating ad tells you, it is every Sunday. But Redline is too lazy to change the banners that rotate through. So yell at Redline, please. Oh God, Redline. Yeah. I didn't know he ran this. I wouldn't have come on. Uh, well, run is, run run is a really <laughs> generous word. <laughs> I, I just remember him from like when he first started FCing for Spectre Fleet. So he 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 runs it a lot like um, the Triad ran Kowloon City. So you know it's it's it, it, it's pretty loose. Um, so what else do we want to talk about? Random question, but if you pull a bunch of injectors out of a character. You get 50% back, right? Define 50% back. You get the full 500,000 skill points out. and The the injector is the same as any other injector. You mean if like, <laughs> you pull it out and then inject it all back in? But doesn't it cost a million to make? No. no it, it costs 500k. So no, you pull 500k be... worth of skill points and then you get 500k? Right, if but that 5... 5 mil SP, you get the full 500k. Yeah. As soon as you go above 5 mil SP, you only get 400k, and then it goes down from there. Like, uh, the injectors just ramp down. But yeah, you can you can end up losing a lot of that SP if you like extract and then inject it back in. That's pretty. Like, 
injectors are not and extractors are not respecking tools. They weren't designed right. for that. Anyway, uh, does that pretty much sum everything up? I yeah, I, I, I appreciate I, you guys having us on the show. It's always good to to get some publicity for what we're we've been doing. Um, that being said, boss is recruiting. Um, donuts if, are for do nots. Join boss. Aren't the homeless always recruiting, though, technically? Like, can't anyone just become homeless? All you do is just undock yeah, we, and we not have, redock? You, you, you're <laughs> calling us homeless, but, I mean, we have multiple Fortizars infrastructure, jump freighter service, all the things that null blocks have to offer, minus... Minus, um, minus any uh, Athenors now. Eh, there's still a few. <laughs> yeah, we still have a bunch of Athenors. Yeah. The narrative from Fred, they put out a, like a morale ping and talked about how we've only got like 10 left. How they've they've taken our SRP source away, even though we've never had SRP. Wait, you mean you you've actually you've actually reached the point where Frat has to put a morale ping out about boss? I'm uh, so proud they, of you they guys. Did a, they did a big multiple paragraph thing, and one paragraph was talking about how Venal doesn't have any Athenors that belong to hostile groups anymore. Which is um, they they said they have like less than ten, which I'm not sure if that's even accurate. That's definitely not accurate. I think it's pretty sad when totally disinterested parties can recon their space better than they can or they're just uh uh or they're, they're just so caught up in propaganda i uh, would make the argument we're safer in venal than in sov space because we'll always have a home and a station when when you get evicted from your sov space you have nowhere to dock we will always have a place to dock so i i, I think we are more have more of a home than than any of you. I think that's exactly the kind of thing a homeless person would say. <laughs> All right, well, guys, it has been super great. It is interesting to hear about the things that the homeless are doing in their homeless tent cities. Wow. But uh, it is also uh, nice to see the dunks you're getting and, and serious congratulations. And I, I wish groups that are doing all this sort of stuff the best. So if the uh, if the Wayfarer life is for you and you want to dunk on some kids, Boss is recruiting, as they said. You should check that out. I'm sure you can figure out how. If not, join our Discord, and I'm sure you can just ask around there, and someone will eventually answer. It might be spongy. Sorry about that. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was this was super fun. Yeah, thanks for being on. Uh, Karama, anything else? We want to close it out. So real quickly, uh, I just want to say uh, a new that uh, I've that I'm I've started a new corporation that is called uh, Out of Mana. Um, t in game ticker Mana Dot. Uh, we are currently a low sec corporation um but don't ask what we're good at because the uh, the answer is nothing um the key founding principle of the corp was uh, a place where you can get on after work go and bullshit with your friends and blow up some some spaceships so there's really no requirements except an api or well, except an esi check and uh since we're not exactly blue to anyone uh I don't really care about dual citizenships as long as you just tell me. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. Spies welcome is what I heard from that. But no, seriously, uh, go, go do some low sec living out of mana, ticker mana dot. Uh, we will always look to plug groups that you can join. Uh, not that I think uh, it's horrible to join Horde, horrible to join Goons, whatever. That That's you know just the worst thing you can do for yourself. It's also not necessarily the best thing you can do for yourself, especially if it's the only Eve you know. So definitely check out some other groups, especially if they're cool with you running some dual citizenship, uh, as Karama said, as long as you tell them. Uh, or, or you could play the kind of Eve where you don't and see where that gets you. But uh, do something, undock, have some fun, shoot. CCB is going to keep screwing up the game and then making it like 50% right and the players will cover the other 50%. That's why this game has stayed alive for 18 years and it's why it's going to stay alive longer despite what Reddit has told you. Uh, that's all I got. And at the end of the day, I mean, Eve is a game where it's only live because I can get on with my homies and shoot the shit, blow up some spaceships, and hell, maybe not even play Eve. Maybe go play Stellaris. Heard. Best Eve so is not playing Eve. 
Friendship is the, the best ship. That's right. That's right. The friendship commodity. All right, Karama, close us out. We've had enough of this nonsense. Uh, I th uh, yeah, you're right. Anyway, guys, uh, that about wraps up our show. If you enjoyed this this show and want to see more EVE related content, well, hit that follow button. I'm not going to tell you what shows we stream because it's gotten to the point where it's going to take too long to name them. Uh, yeah, that covers that. Don't forget to always bubble wrap your keep stars. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.